and the supervisors to develop a proof of concept for a challenge from an, an incubator. And the big aim, the big ambition that I told you about is to take this a step forward. So at this moment, we are somehow, the teachers involved in the process are somehow coordinating with the incubators which projects from all the offers that we get, which offers uh, are we selecting to offer to the students, and we are creating the teams for each of these projects. The ambition is that in two, two years we are applying for funds now, also for this, so I hope that in June we get good news and we can move forward. The idea is that we can have a big network of universities all involved in this, and the companies, the, the incubators, the startups can submit the offers into a platform, and the students can say, okay, I like this platform, I want to be in this team. So they apply to the team without even knowing who are, who are the other team teammates. And then in the end, we will have these uh, teams created uh, dynamically depending on the student's interest, and then depending also on the competencies that are required to develop a proof of concept for that particular aspect. So this is a very specific, but we believe a very powerful way to develop all the competencies that are required by the labor market these days. Because the students during the semester are working to uh, develop a product for a company, they are essaying and developing their art skills in a setting that is very hard to manage if they do their final project at, 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 at university. Because usually, and we have all our students, and this is common in most European universities, all our students have a final year uh, uh, project course that they have to do. Usually it's in the last semester of the course. They have to go to a company, to a research lab, or to do some kind of project as if they were in the labor market to show that they have already mastering, they are mastering the technical competences they have been learning during the course. But usually they are working in a company or in a research lab along with the supervisor. In this setting, the students are working with other uh, uh, disciplines, with other study areas. And this is already a critical differentiating aspect because the students from IT are very used to programming, but they are not very used to the details of uh, uh, the user interfacing and user experience that they have to cope with when they are involved in providing a solution with students from graphical arts, students used to work on these types of uh, uh, fields. So we are very happy with the results and um, we have in fact already some companies that uh, in the regions where these universities are based that are uh, asking students, have you done this blended A course or not? So what is the concept for the course? The students get together twice, that is why we call it blended mobility. It's a course that blends physical mobility with virtual mobility. The students are working in an international team during the full semester, but they meet only two times. They meet during a week, in the first week, usually in the last week of February. They meet for a week to get to know the teammates, to get to know the, 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 the challenge that the company is offering. Usually on the first day of the week, they are all the day with the company. The company pitches the, the challenge, and then the students have the chance to discuss the details with them, and then the students have all the week to organize the way they will work and uh, during the semester to develop a solution for the challenge that was provided by the company. Then students go to their home university and they start developing their part of the problem but always communicating with each other. And here again, they have to develop all this work cooperating at a distance using IT technology and using all, so gaining this uh, digital literacy that is required by today's employers. Then at the end of the semester, this year it will be in the end of June in Porto, the students will get together again with the company, with the jury, the teachers, and they will finalize the presentation and in the last day they present the product they have developed for the company, they discuss what they have done and they are ready for that. So this is the concept that we have developed. MUTW was the first edition. MUTW stands for Multinational Undergraduate Teamwork. 
it was the first name, but then it stands also for uh, me, for and me and you together, win, which was a motto for teamwork to represent the, 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 how you can improve yourself by working in, uh, in, in, in this aspect. So I will go briefly for some key aspects. I won't, won't bother you too much with the, these technical details, but we are here to discuss the core aspects of blended mobility and of the benefits this can bring to the to the to the students. So the course plan, you know more or less the general details I told you about. So usually the universities in the consortium meet a little earlier than November, usually in September, October, to see the offers they have from the companies, to select one and to see which students we need. If we need more students from IT, more students from other areas. Then we have a kickoff meeting, which is a face-to-face -face meeting in the end of February with everybody together. Then the students go to their own universities to work on the project. And then they meet, they meet again together in the end of, of, the, of the semester. There are a few critical success factors that we have identified along these years. The first one is that uh, we should have, uh, we should provide credits, I don't know where I said. Students must get credits for the work that they are doing. We, we did, yeah, we did some um, experiences in the first years where, where we had volunteer <coughs> students that were not getting credits for, for the work they were doing. Usually we, what, well, what we have realized in, that in this case, Motivation goes a little bit down. So when students have very high motivation in the first weeks, then it goes a little bit down, and then it raises again when they start approaching the final phase of the project. And if the students do not get credits, they go down in the motivation, then they do not recover, and it's, it's an issue. So students should have uh, um, should get credits for that. Another critical aspect, of course, is that funding is required. Because the students have to move twice. And anyway, this is less than they would have to move if they were on a mobility for all the for all the, the semester. But uh, even though we need to get funding for this, and this is another interesting aspect that we have for the last four years, is that companies are willing to sponsor these activities. If you can imagine a team with 12, 12 students plus six teachers supervising the students. They are all, all working during four months to offer a proof of concept for a challenge from a company. This is very um, high value for the company. That's why I say that this model can work fine because it adds value to all the stakeholders. The students get an incredible new and fresh environment to develop themselves as professionals. The companies get a proof of concept in the end of the day and they are interacting with the team every day and giving guidelines every day if required and the university get this closer connection so we believe this to be in fact um, a win-win situation for all those uh, involved. Blended mobility, you can see blended mobility. We have, I did not mention this before, so before the kickoff meeting there is a preparatory stage during two weeks before the kickoff meeting, we give some assignment to students so that they start cooperating online without meeting each other. So this is an online phase of the course. Then the students have a face-to-face -face meeting during the first week of the project. Then they go online again during all the semester, working at their own institution, developing their part of the project, but always in cooperation so that everything integrates well. And then in the final week, they go face to face again for five days more to finalize the presentation, to give the presentation, and to uh, discuss the, the results with, uh, with the teachers and being evaluated. Um, so we have general learning outcomes. So the main learning outcomes of this module of this blended mobility model are not related to the art skills. That is something that we give for granted as the employer. So what we want to develop here is the soft skills. We want to make sure that the students are working and without, so this is some type of non-formal learning because the students are not really uh, being taught how to develop their teamwork competences, how to cope with 
uh, uh, um, negotiation of details and how to cope with different cultures, different ways of seeing things, different ways of working. And all of this makes them really European citizens after this period because they are really, in fact, uh, cooperating with very different cultures. Another key aspect that we have, we try to get teams of students that come from very different regions in Europe so that these cultural differences are really uh, uh, notorious there. Um, regarding the evaluation, which the evaluation for the students has these three aspects. One, which is the team score, which is the same for all the students, and this one accounts for 80%, it's a big share. And then we have peer evaluation and the student's supervisor. The team uh, share, the team mark that the students get is 70% uh, provided by the academic jury, by, by the teachers, 30% by the client, by the company who is offering the challenge, and it has this uh, four criteria. We analyze the specification, the product, the process, and the presentation of the students. These details that you see here are the details from previous years, so they are very focused on software development because that was the project we were dealing with, but we can easily adapt these to other study fields. We just have to review what is in fact relevant from the specification point of view, the product, the process, and all of that. Even here in the process, we are using tools and uh, analyzing the development process very linked to software development systems. So this gives you a score, which is the score for the team, and then we have the other components of the score. So this is one team from last year, only the names have been changed. This is the team score that the students get. This is the peer evaluation. Peer evaluation is done three times during the, the course. After the first meeting, in fact, on the last day of the first week, the students have to evaluate their own work and the work of the other colleagues in the team. Then they do this again in the mid-term of the process, so usually in the end of April, and then in July, after the final presentation, after all this is stress is gone, they are asked again to fill in the peer evaluation, they evaluate their own work and the other teams, and then we get a repeating average of that, and this gives this mark, and then the supervisor also gives them a, a, a mark from each university, and these they get the, the final mark for, for their course. One issue that we are having, and again, um, it is our belief that blended mobility has a huge potential to develop the competences we're going to develop in students, and it's very adequate to, the, to this digital era, to this 21st century, but there are, some still, there are still some issues that we have to solve. One is the certification of the competences that the students acquire with this process. We have been fighting with our national agency to have uh, Europass mobility being used, but we did not succeed so far, so we hope that in the next year we will find a way to uh, discuss this either with the Commission or some, some uh, other institutions so that we can have some, uh, somehow um, a way to certify this from the students. Uh, so I leave you now with the main issue here, why is blended education and in particular blended mobility relevant for uh, higher education these days. First of all, because it's really a way to make international mobility available to all, despite several uh, uh, pitfalls and several handicaps that are uh, in the place. At least at ESA and in my department, I'm from the IT department, and we have uh, approximately 250, 260 students doing a project course every year, a traineeship in a company in the last year, and the truth is that if they do a good job, they are employed. So students do not like very much to go abroad in the last semester because they know if they stay and do the internship home, they have a good job opportunity there. So going abroad in this period is not good. With this blended mobility, they can have this international contact, this international exposure during studies, which is critical for their personal development, for their professional development, and still be working at their hometown and going, being able to go to job interviews and all that. So, in fact, this is a setting that 
contrary to physical mobility that forces students to be abroad for three or four months, where the students do not have to lose these opportunities. This is also a possibility for the students that have some type of uh, disability. If you have a, a deaf student or a blind student that wants to go for international experience, you have to take someone with him. And it's very expensive to have someone next to you for four months. But if you go one week and then you come home and you are home, but you are in an international contact because we have already met people and you are working on the same project with them in a team. So this is a clear way from our point of view and from the experience we have already uh, for these years, a very good opportunity to really democratize this uh, internationalization contact that is crucial for today's uh, young people uh, about to enter in the labor market. So the main thing that we see, the main benefit we see in blended mobility is the fact that it overcomes barriers to, 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 mob to mobility. And you can very easily adapt this approach to any, any other degree. So <coughs> we are more or less on time. Thank you very much. We are looking for the I do have one. Uh, the time frame for the projects that you presented are static. Do you have any plans to make them more adaptable to, to students? Either by a whole new time frame or just change the, the ends of the project? Okay, um, they are static after they are agreed, in fact, because in the first now, these, these days, we have, uh, this year, the universities, we have more or less the same academic year, year, um, period. But in the first years, we had universities with very different uh, academic years, and we had to manage that, so that the team could be working together during uh, 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 the same period. We have universities in Greece, and we have universities in Iceland and the academic years do not overlap for big periods. So uh, we always work with the members in the team to go to that and to see what is the best time to have these meetings so that we can go with uh, everybody. Another thing that in the future we would like to, to do when we have this uh, um, enlarged consortium of universities is to make sure that the students that are in the same team are coming from different places, but where these issues do not do not apply. But there is one particular, even in this year, we have some students that need to have their marks available in the middle of June, and the last meeting is going to be in the last week of June. So in these cases, what the students do is that they defend their project at their own university, and the mark they get is not really the mark from the project, but the mark from the, the, the institution. Okay. Very nice, you clearly mentioned the importance of the soft skills that right now are more important than the hard skills. Yes. I, mean, I was yes. checking an email that I have received uh, from Harvard Business Review letters about this, and you know, they say that around 75% of the employers they believe that the soft skills are more important than the hard skills. So it's a clear abundance of the soft skills compared to the hard skills. Uh, but you know, there is an issue over there. Yeah. And the question comes to you. First of all, how do we measure this? I mean, you, 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 I mean, you are you are very passionate about this. Uh, you suspect that you know through blend mobility you develop and you improve and enhance the soft skills. But how do you measure this? Yeah. Because hard skills is an exam. So you pass or you fail the exams and you can measure it. But what about the soft skills? How are they? How, how do you secure that a student that does not have a communication skill after this fantastic experience has developed it? Do you measure it? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. I have a question after, yeah. but I, I really am okay. really so, curious about this. Yeah. At the moment, we know that the students, uh, we, every year we do evaluation with the students and we get that feedback from them. But at this moment, we are running Euromob. Euromob is a project funded by the Commission that, is, that started in September, and the purpose is exactly to develop the tools to certify 
the soft skills in the students and the competences they acquire in this international mobility. And how do you do this? I mean, I'm we are working now with uh, the companies. From, from the companies that you know, one way to do it is like through interviews. You are doing a lot of interviews, and through the yes. interviews, you yeah. somehow calculate and count the, yeah. the soft skills of the people. Yeah. But in this project, what are your ideas? We, we are working with that now with companies uh, in the area of career development and assessing. Um, I think one of the companies is even from Greece, uh, from Greece, from Greece, from Greece, <laughs> from Greece. That they are exactly working on that, and we are developing tools, questionnaires, and other types of tools, so that we can apply them before the training period and after the training period to somehow certify the competence. Please come to us and we can, we can participate in this project by applying all these methods to our students because we are trying in our department to evolve all these courses, like courses to help the students to improve their skills. Yes. Right. And the second question that I have, I mean, what about the accreditation? You know, students, you know, they spend, you know, like four months in a, into a project, and at the end, you know, they should justify their time, and they should award it if they are successful to some ECDS. Yes. So what is, what is the scheme? What are they missing? Okay, yeah. So these students are doing this project, but they are enrolled in the course in their universities. At, at IPP, the students have, are, they have this course for 18 ECTS, which is the bachelor project, the capstone project course they have to do. And they are doing that, but doing this project. So all the students get their, those ECTS because they are doing this under a course in, the, in their curricula. Okay? And the number of ECTS is different from student to student. Because and that is wrong in different courses. Yes. There are different courses, and even in the same course, there are different ECTS. The students at ISEP have 18 ECTS credits for this capstone project, but we have other partners with six ECTS, other partners with 10 ECTS, and it's what we are doing on one of the, on the first meeting, we ask all the students, we divide them in areas, so we have students from IT, students from uh, this graphical design, students from marketing, students from project management, and we ask them, how many ECTS credits do you have, how many do you have, and we make a board, and we say, okay, for IT we have, 40 CDS for graphical arts, we have 10 CDS, and that is the budget the students have, so that they can propose a solution for their company, not overcoming that budget. So, if you want to give a solution to the company, but instead of 10 CDS, you need 20 CDS for graphical arts, and you do not have them, then you have to lower your expectations and present a solution to the company that is according with your CDS budget. So, this is another way to in, in in students, to promote in students, with, um, um, to make sure that they are aware of what they are committing to, and in the end, um, they have to be sure they can deliver what they are promising the client to do, according to the number of working hours they have. Any more questions? No. Thank you very much.